Ken Singleton played for the Orioles from the mid-70s to the mid-80s. Since his retirement as a player, Ken has broadcast Montreal and Yankee games. Now, Ken Singleton and Jim Palmer were inducted into the Orioles Hall of Fame together in 1986. They are together right now for a look at a scouting report on Ken Singleton from back in the early 70s. Well, I always like the Yankees that come town because I know uh, one of my <laughs> former teammates, uh, Kenny Singleton, is going to be here, lives in Baltimore, uh, you know, and had a terrific career. What about 15 years? It's about five weeks since the uh, the uh, the uh, draft, the Major League draft. Uh -huh. And I just want to kind of, I want to ask you a couple of things. But the first one is, let's go back and revisit the, what, the 1967 draft. You were the third pick in by the by the Mets yeah. in the in the United States. So let's go back now the next year 1968 you're playing in Visalia. Kenny Singleton, left fielder, his arm may hold him back. Well, that didn't turn out to be the thing. Was below average, could do the rest, yes. Mm -hmm. Looks like a pretty good hitter from both sides. He impressed us, moved up uh, in the middle of the year, Czech International League. So he went from A ball to yeah. AAA. Yeah. So now let's go to 19, what, 82. I don't know who this scout was, but you're in Chicago, and, you know, you're playing with McCarver, you're playing with Ron Fairley, and uh, uh, let's talk about Expos right days, here. Huh? Yeah, 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 well, fair major leaguer. Now, um, and he only saw you two games. <laughs> but again, really? he, he must have, <laughs> yeah, he, wait, he was a tough grader because he only had, uh, he had uh, Clyde uh, Shore, I guess, who played on that ball. Uh, Clyde May Shore. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. the only guy that he got a three. Everybody else got twos. But let me just May talk Shore to didn't you. didn't even play. Uh, okay, so <laughs> you are the number one draft choice. Yeah. Um, you're, you see, you get traded from the Mets uh, for uh, Rusty Staub. Mm -hmm. Pretty big trade for both ball clubs because you go there and have great years. But for a guy with a bad arm, mm -hmm. tell me what happened between 1967, your first year with the Mets, and the 20 assists you had with Montreal. Because I'm trying to get to how can a young player improve himself? Well, well I, I think that, number one, I thought I always had a pretty good arm. Maybe it wasn't as accurate as it had, yeah. you know, once became, but the fact is that I led the National League in assists one year. Yep. Uh, he, evidently, that scout didn't see me the, for that season. <laughs> uh, that was, uh, I think it was 1973, where I had my first big year, and that was when I really got on the radar of the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, the next year, I didn't have quite as good a year, and that's when the Orioles traded for me. Uh, the scout, uh, I found out over the years that scout that uh, recommended me to the Orioles uh, said that you should trade anybody you have except Brooks Robinson to get this kid. So and I, I began to think about it. The Orioles are a pretty good team. They had Baylor and Gritch and, uh, of course, you. Well, that wasn't going to happen. They weren't going to trade you. But the, the fact is that uh, the trade was made, and that's where – I got the break. Well, we not break. only got you. I think it was uh, Richie Coggins and yeah. Dave McNally going up to Montreal, and mm -hmm. we got we we also got Mike Torres. Who, yeah. So of course you go on 1977. You're third in the American League in uh, most valuable voting, and then mm -hmm. two years later, when we go to the World Series, we lose to the Pirates in seven games. You're second in yeah. the most value. But so, but let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I only. What, 15 years, two times you struck out more than 100 times. But in those years, you walked over 100 times. Yeah. The modern-day hitter, you do, uh, I don't know how many games now, you used to do a lot. Yeah. Well, all the guys swinging and all that. I mean, what was you, what was your philosophy as a hitter? A, a philosophy as a hitter was not to strike out, number one. Number, I think the fact is that when you got two strikes, I began to cut down on my swing. That's when I was looking more to the middle. Obviously, that, that was early in the count. I'm going for it. <laughs> but the, the fact is I felt when you got two strikes, there was a stigma to striking out back in those days. It doesn't exist right now. The hitters that I see now do not have two-strike approaches. They're just up there going for it from day one uh, to the end of the at-bat. And in a way, that's unfortunate. Not as many balls are put in play. Uh, you don't see some of the great fielding plays. You see some, but not as many with all these guys turning around and walking back to the dugout. Okay, 2016, the Yankees, they kind of rebuilt themselves, mm -hmm. and the Orioles are kind of the window may have closed. So, they, you know, they have Manny, they have Britton, they have even Adam Jones, uh, Brad Brockett, and they're probably going to make some deals. But Cliff Frazier comes over in the Andrew Miller deal. Mm -hmm. But maybe even more important, uh, uh, Glaber Torres comes over in the Chapman deal. Yeah. And, of course, they re-sign Chapman, which uh, it really works out well for him. 
when you see these young players, what makes them special? Especially uh, Torres, who's uh, made the All-Star team in his first year. Yeah, I think Torres was the number one prospect in baseball when the Yankees made the trade. And I think that trade with the Cubs, it was the perfect storm. I mean, the Cubs had waited 108 years. They hadn't won a World Series. And they, they see a chance here to make this deal. And I think the Yankees put the pressure on it and said, if this kid's not in a deal, we're not giving you Chapman. So it worked out for both these teams because the Cubs... They won the World Series after 108 years, and uh, I think it was worth it for them to get that done. They might have to wait another 108, but the, the fact is that they, they did win the World Series, and uh, the Yankees had the wherewithal to get Chapman back, and he's, he's an all-star this year, too. So you heard it, Tom Davis, from Kenny Singleton. You better get what you want from Manny Machado. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kenny. You're welcome.